So, we live in the 21st century. Our entire lives are now connected online. And because of this, we have this idea that everything is nice and shiny and is all smart. We are connected to our digital selves. We can do everything online now. Finances. We can even vote in Estonia. Ironically, I have a picture of the UK here, which is quite strange because we're still waiting for the ID card to be invented. <laughs> But nevertheless, in Estonia, I know that you understand technology. You get the benefits that it helps society as a whole. But when we think of cybersecurity, we generally like to think hoodie, a spotty youth, eating cheese doodles in a basement, <laughs> overbites, dateless wonders. That's the image we have. And because of that, we don't actually really understand what the threat is. Now, I'm going to bring this to a bit traditional crime at the moment. Most times when somebody is arrested, it's somebody that's actually connected to that person. It's normally an insider or somebody that's done a lot of research and knowledge. And because of that, the reality is hackers are people just like you. And because of that, that is the element that we miss. It is a human problem, not a tech problem. And because of that, we approach it the wrong way. But also something quite interesting has happened recently. We've got more technology in order to protect things like intruder detection systems, firewalls, antivirus, these type of things. So the vector that people are using is now more human. It's targeting you as a person. But before we start talking about that, let's just get one thing quite clear. Your personal life and your work life are not separate. They are one. Everybody here will check their work email on their phone. Everybody here checks Facebook at work. Everybody here uses WhatsApp, telephones, everything. Because of that, you are one digital profile. And this is something hackers can exploit. So what am I going to do today? Well, we are in lovely Tartu. So let's have a look. Tartu University. 16,470 staff at the last count of members, researchers and students. So I did a social engineering of this and I just worked out how many details I can find of usernames, passwords, date of births, addresses and everything online. 1,392 usernames and passwords I've collected within one line of a, just a quick, easy script. That's an awful lot. But what can I do with that? Well, the problem is, so while these are older passwords, I can really start manipulating it. Because some of these hacks come from things like LinkedIn, meh. MySpace, yeah, your 16-year-old self might have a problem with it. But what about Ashley Madison? I know you're cheating on your husband. It doesn't matter what the password is. I'll just phone you up and go, by the way, I know you like long walks on the beach and <laughs> I know what you're doing nocturnally. You'll give me your password. But also, the way humans work is a bit off. Now, we all know if you work at a university or work at a business, you're always going to have different passwords for different systems. None of you do. <laughs> The only people that read policies are people that write policies. <laughs> so once we get that clear, that's fine. I know your password for your email is going to be the same as your work email. If it's not, it will be different by one digit. Same thing as well. Uh, a number of people here probably have three monthly changing passwords with their work. If you do, I can categorically read your mind. Your password is an uppercase letter and the last character of, of, at the start and at the last the character, that's a number that you change every three months. <laughs> Everybody does it. If you don't, it's really complicated. You're not smart because you're writing it down because no one else can remember it. <laughs> so, reusing passwords or patterns, I can start to see this. I can start to work out how you form them. But here's an interesting one. Even old passwords can be used against you. So, let's do a little bit of a session here. Everyone heard of rate.ee? <laughs> mm, yes, okay. Put your hand up if you've got an account. 
or had an account. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Grammar is important there, isn't it? <laughs> okay. How many of you trust your 16-year-old self to not do anything slightly embarrassing? <laughs> how many people are still using the account? And how many people have deleted the account? Okay, so one third of you have deleted it. Two thirds of you still have your 16 year old messages on the internet that I can use and exploit. Your date of birth doesn't change. Your face doesn't change. One of the very interesting cases I had to deal with at Cambridge University was uh, one of the students was touring in Ukraine and saw her face being advertised on a billboard because someone had gone into their photos and profiles, taken a picture, and used it for advertising. The only reason she noticed is she was at a conference and went, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> but the most important thing we need to understand is a hacker doesn't need lots of accounts. They need one, just one, to get in to the University of Tartu. So you've got to make sure that everyone understands. But the problem is, the hackers can easily find this out, but you don't know about it. So if there's one thing you take away from this, please go to the website haveibeenpunned.com, if you can Google that, put your email address in, and it will tell you where your credentials have been leaked from. Anybody here that has worked in an office or as a student who has Adobe, I can categorically guarantee your username and password is online, and it's been exposed, because most people's are. But have a look, see where you've been breached, put all your old email accounts in there, and if you'd want to see me uh, during the day, I'm more than happy to type in some details and tell you what your password was if you've forgotten it. <laughs> it happened a few times with me. But one of the things we do in IT is overcomplicate things. So this type of attack vector is called social engineering. First thing I'll definitely tell you about this is I absolutely despise the term social engineering. It makes it way more complicated than it really is. Ridiculous. It's a scam. So, avid watchers of uh, TED Talks will have seen about spiff, uh, uh, how you can fish the fishes. Solomon, your email intrigues me. <laughs> that type of attitude from there. The funny thing is, though, the first recorded case of this is actually in the 17th and 18th century. It was called the Spanish prisoner scam. So, the Nigerian scam. You've got a long-lost prince. He's very, very rich. If only you pay the transfer fees and you'll get 2.3 million euros. Woohoo! Spanish prisoner scam. Your long-lost uncle is in prison in Spain, fighting the war. He's very, very rich. But he's in prison, so he needs bail. Please give one bar of gold and you'll get a truck bar of, uh, truckload back afterwards. It's exactly the same. The difference is, the internet exists. It's easier to do this on a mass scale now, whereas before, you had to put a lot of effort in. You'd have to, hello, Mr. Lord. <laughs> You'd have to put in effort. Now, you can do it on a mass scale. So the difference, though, between a good, successful scam and one that is just generic is emotion. The range of attacks vary. The one we're going to focus on today is fear, but something that provokes you, something that makes you feel passionate, makes you think this could be real. And the one we're going to show you today is actually one that was used at the University of Cambridge. But I've actually got it in three phases, when they started and the end result. At the start, it was semi-successful, but they learned. The hackers got more information. They developed their attack, and in doing so, made it nearly impossible for me to deal with. So, this was the first email that was sent in 2015. It was sent to me because I was on one of the lists. Dear, and a blank name. I set up malware on an adult video pornographic website, and guess what? You visited this site to have fun. You know what I mean. If you do not pay one bitcoin, I will send it to your friends. Regards, Mr. A. Criminal. <laughs> This is a very good attack vector to news, because while this hits thousands of people at Cambridge, students generally aren't going to report this. People don't like to talk about nocturnal activities to their supervisor. But it was quite successful, but not very. 
It doesn't connect with the attacker. But they learn, they adapt, and they overcome. So this is the second email. Dear Kieran, they've made sure they've got my name attached to it. You may not know me, and you are probably wondering why you're getting this email, right? I set up malware on your website. It then mentions RDP, a technology that some of us use. Keylogger, that it accessed your webcam and recorded you while you were doing it. That we're going to publish this online. We've seen your Facebook Messenger. We've got your email address. It starts to make that connection. But they also did very smart things in how humans work. They made sure they sent this email on a Friday afternoon. Because if there's one thing you can guarantee at universities, is we don't work Friday afternoons. So if they did have a problem, it wasn't being dealt with, not until Monday morning. They also made sure that when they put the details in of when they recorded this video, it would be at a time that maybe they were doing nocturnal activities. <laughs> but they also started then to filter it. At first, it was just a block email sent to loads and loads of people. But now they're starting to target. They've stripped the ladies out of it. It's just men. And it's just students. Making sure it targets and pokes that right, right element to make you react. But then we get to the last stage. Dear Kieran, you may not know me, and I don't know you, other than what you like, you naughty boy. <laughs> I set up a malware package on that adult website, and guess what? I know what you like. RDP, Messenger, Facebook. But look at the bit at the end. Do you want proof? Your email address is kieranml at att.net, and your password is 114704-alpha5. That was my genuine username and password. It was breached from the LinkedIn. That was what it was. I know where they got it. Would you? Would you know how they got this information, or would you start to be completely scared, petrified, worried about who you can turn to? Because especially, they've got nothing. There is nothing on there at all that you've actually done anything. There's been no webcam, there's been no malware, but the effect is exactly the same because you're attacking the human element. And that is what we need to counteract. So does it work? Yeah. So 250,000 euros has been collected by this hacker on just this one attack vector. It's very, very effective. Why hack a computer when you can just ask people to give the stuff over? It's so much easier. I don't have to do any programming. And that attitude is what we need to, to sort out. And what we do wrong is the education. Now, everybody here, I'm assuming for work, has to do some cybersecurity education. How many of you click next a lot and then click finish? And do it every year because it's boring? You do it because it's a compliance requirement. It's just like health and safety. Yes, next, next, next. You know what the answers are. And you just say, bleh. Of course I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't set my password like this. But because of that, you don't actually know what's going on. So what we should actually do is educate people of what is actually wrong about them. We should search our organizations. Pretend to be a hacker. Pretend to try and harvest as much information as possible. I know it sounds very egotistical, but Google yourself. <laughs> Have a look to see where your profile picture is being used. To see where your usernames and passwords are being exploited. Put them in Have I Been Punned. Check to see where your data is. But this also education leads on to something else. Now, in the military and in cybersecurity, we have a term called need to know. And this is leaked into the cybersecurity industry. The problem is, that's actually not what we say in the military. It's need to know with a responsibility to share. That is the big difference. If something hits you, you need to tell your competitors. Because your competitors will be hit, and if they get hit, you would want to know about it as well. The same attack is being used across the board. I once gave a talk to uh, most of the universities in the UK, and I was telling them about how we were hit hard at Cambridge. And one of the things that was very ironic is faces started to drop in the audience. Because 
while I was the first one to tell everybody that we've been hit, everybody else had been hit as well. And my first response was, well, why the hell didn't you tell me? Because then I could have done something against it. Keeping it in a silo is what causes problems. Because if it works for one organisation, you might as well keep trying and, and get more money, to get more resources, to get more to exploit it. So the summary is quite simple, really. It is not an IT problem. It is a human problem. Humans make mistakes. People have their entire lives online. If you go back 10 years ago, dating was something that you did in real life. <laughs> now it's Tinder. Everybody is doing everything with that structure, and this can be collected and used against you. But we also need to kind of learn the lessons from the villages of old. When you were living in a little hamlet, and there was a threat coming in, either some sort of hordes of Vikings, in my case, were going to go and ruin your entire village, you would warn people. You would tell everybody that this is happening. This is what we need to do within cybersecurity. Be open to tell people of what the incidents are and what's hitting us hard, while also at the same time making sure that your entire organisation and your country knows actually what is out there and what is exposed. Together, by working as one, we can really meet this challenge. But individually, we will fall. Thank you very much.